In this video, we're going to take a look at an introduction to Venn diagrams. Now, I'm calling this an introduction, but really it is more of a recap of GCSE material for Venn diagrams. So to begin with here, let's say we've got two events, A and B. If I denote the left-hand curve here as the event A, and the right-hand curve as the event B, and then we replicate that here for the other two Venn diagrams, A and B, and again, A and B. Okay, we'll get something that looks like this. So if we take a look at the notation now, let's use a different color to represent the notation here. So to begin with here, let's take a look at the intersection. The probability of A intersection B, okay? And it looks almost like an N here. It's not quite an N, but it does look like an N. This represents the intersection, okay? And this is when both A and B occur. So both A and B occur. Okay, so like we said, this is the intersection. And where do we shade here on the Venn diagram to represent the intersection? Well, that would be this region here in the middle. Okay, we just shade that here. We'll get something that looks like that. Okay, so that would be the probability of A and B. So now if we take a look at the union here, and we'll represent that here on the middle Venn diagram. Again, let's use a different color. So now for the union, that would be the probability of A union B. And notice now for the union, we use this almost like a U, and this represents the union. So this is when we have A, B, or A and B. Okay, so A, B, or A and B. Okay. So again, if we shade on the Venn diagram here for the union, where would that be? Or well, we can have A, we shade A here, that would be this circle here. Okay, we could have B, again, that would be this part here. Or we could have A and B. So A and B, that would be the intersection. Okay, so we can also shade the intersection here. Okay, so that's the union. Okay, so basically it's everything inside both circles. Okay, including the intersection. And then finally, the last bit of notation here that you need to be familiar with, the first year material for our probability and Venn diagrams here. Again, let's do this in a different color. Let's do this in green. Is the complement. Okay. Let's say we're looking for the probability of B complement. The way we represent the complement here is this little dash. Um, this represents the complement. And the probability of B complement here, well, this is the same as 1 minus the probability of B. Okay. So, like I said, this is the complement. Just uh, write that here. This is the complement. Again, how would we shade this here? Well, basically, this is everything but B. Okay, so we'd have A here. Obviously, we wouldn't include the intersection here because we don't want B. Okay, so we leave the intersection. We won't shade that. So that's um, A there. And obviously, we want the outside as well. Okay, so probably a B complement. So that's going to be everything inside A, a here excluding the intersection and everything on the outside. Okay, so we'll just shade on the outside here. It's not the prettiest, but you'll get the idea. And we'll get something that looks like that. Okay. And there we have it. So that's the three bits of notation that you need to be familiar with. So we've got the intersection, the union, and the complement. Okay. That gives us everything we need there for our introduction to Venn diagrams. So now let's take a look at some practice questions. So we start with question one here, we've got a group of 50 students, 12 study Spanish, 10 study French, and then 5 study both French and Spanish. So for part A, we're asked to draw a Venn diagram to represent this information. So the first thing I need to do here is label which of these events will be Spanish and which will be French. So if I denote the left hand curve here as being S for Spanish, and then the right hand curve here as being F for French. Okay. Now, when we're asked to draw a Venn diagram and we're given information like this, what we do here is we work out from the middle, so we work out from the intersection, okay? We know that there's going to be five students who study both French and Spanish. We'll place the five here in the intersection. Now, we work out here, like we said, from the intersection. If we want the number of students here who just study Spanish, that's going to be 12, because there's 12 students who study Spanish minus the intersection. So 12 minus 5 would give me 7. 
and we do the same here for the French students. So there's 10 students who study French, minus a 5 then in the intersection, that will give me 5. Now we're not done here, because we also need the number of students who don't study um, Spanish or French. So that's going to be the total number of students, which is 50. So 50 students minus the sum of these three numbers. So 7 plus 5 plus 5. 5 plus 5 is 10, plus a 7 is 17, so 50 minus 17 gives me 33. Okay, so in the bottom right hand corner here, let's just place that number. Okay, and that's our solution then to part A, that's our Venn diagram representing this information. So for part B, it says find the probability that a student chosen at random studies Spanish. If we pick a student at random, what's the probability that they study Spanish? Well, what numbers here would give us that success then? So probability, so it's Spanish. Let's just write this down here. Like we said, what numbers would give us the probability of success here? Well, that would be this seven here. That would mean they study Spanish. And this five here would also mean that they study Spanish. Okay, that's going to be seven plus five. Then we divide this by the total number of students which in this case is 50. So we get seven plus five over 50, which gives us 12 over 50. And we can simplify that here to give us six over 25. Okay, so that's our solution to part B. And then finally for part C here, we're asked to find the probability that our student does not study French. So what numbers here would give us success? Well, that would be this seven here. That means they don't study French. And this 33 here also means that they don't study French. So in that case then, probably of not French, let's just call it that, not French. Or let's say not French student. Like we said, that would be the seven here, plus the 33. And again, that's out of the total number of students, which is 50. That gives me five out of 50 which we can simplify to give us four fifths there. Okay. And there we have it. So that's our solution to question one. And finally, let's take a look now at the very last question here. So we've got the events A and B, such that the probability of A is 0 0.27, the probability of B is 0 0.48, and then the probability of the intersection here, A and B, is 0 0.21. So for part A, we're asked to find the probability of A union B. And we're not asked to here, but what I would recommend doing is drawing a Venn diagram. So we just start with a rectangle here. It doesn't have to be perfect. So let's say we get something that looks like this. So if I draw the two curves here, my left hand curve being the event A, and the right hand curve here being the event B. So that's A and that's B. So to draw the Venn diagram here based on this information, just like we did for the previous question, remember we begin with the intersection and then we work out from there. So the intersection here, the probability is 0 0.21. That's 0 0.21 here. So for this probability here, that's going to be the probability of A, 0 0.27, minus the in intersection here, so 0 0.27 minus 0 0.21 will give us 0 0.06. Then for B here, we just do the same, so that's going to be 0 0.48 minus the intersection of 0 0.21, that will give us 0 0.27 there. Okay, now we're not done here for drawing the Venn diagram. Just don't forget we also need not A and not B. So in other words, a number that just goes inside the rectangle here. So that's going to be 1, the sum of the probabilities, minus these three probabilities here. So 0 0.06 plus 0 0.21 plus 0.27. Well, 0 0.06 plus 0 0.21, that would give me 0 0.27. So what I've got here is 1 minus 0 0.27 plus 0 0.27. That's 1 minus 0 0.54, which gives us 0 0.46 there. Okay, this number here in the bottom right is 0 0.46. So we've got the Venn diagram there, we've got everything we need now. So for the probability of A union B, and that's just everything inside the circles. Okay, so that's going to be 0 0.06 plus 0 0.27 plus 0 0.24 plus 0 0.26 plus 0 0.26 plus 0 0.27 plus 0 0.26 plus 0 0.26 plus 0 0.26 plus 0 0.
plus 0.21. And then finally, plus 0.27. But don't forget, we have already done this summation here. That was this bracket, and that came to 0.54 there. Okay, that's our solution to pi a. Part b then, we have to find the probability of a complement. So it's up to you whether you use the Venn diagram to actually answer this, but there's a much easier way of doing it. Just remember for the complement here of a, so the probability of a complement, this is 1 minus the probability of a. Okay, that's going to be 1 minus 0.27. So 1 minus 0.27 there. Okay, in that case that would give us 0.73. That's our solution to b. And then finally for c here, so the probability of a complement intersection b complement so not a and not b well the only thing that could be here would be this number here in the bottom right okay so that's going to be 0.46 there and there we have it so that gives us the solution to question two that brings us to the end of this video and an introduction to venn diagrams in the next video we're going to take a look at mutually exclusive and independent events